Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury C three bringing you another analysis stream. It's going to be a match between Steel Blue and Ivan on Kaleo. We're going to be going over. Oh, not really much to do. I mean, we've seen we have seen Steel Blue and Ivan in the exhibition match casts. I don't think there's anything really to say too much. Although I am impressed that they have rather improved their elo very quickly over the last month or so. They've both been clearly practicing fairly hard. Well, let's see how they play against each other then. So we have... Yeah, Kaleo, which fairly familiar map. Lava. Got decent amount of hills. I mean, it's kind of a hilly map, so let's kind of go over it a bit. I do, as much as I am starting out with... Actually, the game started, so Ivan D is going for a Beagle Factory. I do like to go over the factories. So if you look here, it's kind of a hilly map. It's got, it's got a thin area here. It has some, cho well, not quite choke points, but the hills do make it be more likely you'd want to use bots, but it's still logically flat enough that you could use vehicles if you wanted to. And that's what Ivan D is doing, though typically what you see here is pure cloaky on cloaky. It's it's all cloaky on cloaky action. That's, that is how this map is basically played. But that is apparently not what's going to happen in this game, so we'll just get started and see what, what Steel Blue goes for. Probably Cloaky, though. See? Steel Blue is going for, well, actually, initially starting out with the resources. Ah, there we go, there's the factory. Cloaky Bot Factory, indeed. And darts coming in from I have indeed. This is not atypical. I, darts, of course, being just standard scout. It a little, is a little bit atypical that it's three, or actually four darts before the Mason. Usually it's more like one dart, one scorcher, and a mason in not necessarily that order. But having four darts this early on, Ivan D is going for something very aggressive. And I find it interesting that they're going to do that, and we'll see in a moment why, or you know, not in a moment, like a few minutes why it's interesting that Ivan D is going heavily for darts right now. Well, Steel Blue is for a more typical glaive. It's three glaives, so it's kind of a moderately defensive build. Normally with three glaives, like you don't want to go too... Like, you're either trying to go heavy aggressive or you're trying to just be there to defend a bit. One glaive is for quick raiding before attacking and then five glaives is because you want to deal a huge amount of damage. Three glaives is in the middle, but in this case it is purely being used for defense. Ivan D discouraged as a result of that and I'm not sure if that's really the thing to do. I think with darts, I mean darts are really cheap. Darts are 40 metal each. That means that Ivan D can pretty much afford to lose these. Glaives are 65 metal each. These darts are probably more useful to get information than not. And they are being preserved, however they... The fact that they are next to each other implies to me that Ivan D wants to harass with them outright. And yeah, Ivan D is going for some harassment. That's not going to work out too well though, unfortunately. Darts do not deal a whole lot of damage, as we can see. They don't last very long. Really, what probably should have happened instead was Ivan D should have sent out like a few darts, or at least in a line. Like, set up a long line of darts, and kind of poke in and out with maybe one or two darts at a time. Just to keep them alive, and there's no reason to waste them. At this point, they're just only being used for information. I have a D on the other hand. They're going now for scorches. They're going heavily aggressive, which is interesting. And this is why, okay, here's why I'm saying darts. The scythe. Now, the thing about the scythe, it's an expensive unit, 250 metal. So it's four darts, or, or six darts or so. Like six and a quarter darts for every scythe. And it's cloaked. Now, of course, being cloaked, that means that it can only be detected by units running near it. But the problem, of course, is that Scorchers are only half the cost. So it actually somehow have to get two Scorchers to run into a single Scythe, as opposed to, say, six darts. Now this is going to be important. Ivan D is going heavily for Scorchers. Very heavily, in fact. I mean, Ivan D has just gone pretty much pure Scorcher. While Steel Blue, on the other hand, is now going for heavy, heavy Scythes. Which is a little bit surprising, honestly, but... I think it's a good idea, especially with the sheer number of Scorchers going around. These sides are going to have a very hard time being countered. They're just going to be going around. I shouldn't say a hard time being countered. It's going to be hard for Ivan D. Steel Blue is going to have no problems whatsoever. Steel Blue is just going to go. It's just, who cares? The sides just go around. They they see what's coming. And actually, I should point out, they do not have the biggest sight range. It's a fairly small sight range, so it's not like they are going to be that powerful, really, when it comes to trying to figure out where... Ivan D scorchers are in advance, but the glaives aren't doing a bad job of that either. And Ivan D, on the other hand, this is what's neat about it. Ivan D actually has a ton of radar, sees the glaives, does not see this scorcher. We see it, but that's because cloaked units actually do show up when I'm only showing a single player view. 
That's a minor, but actually in this case, rather useful bug. Regardless, this scythe, that is completely un unharassed. Not even accounted for. Steel Blue, I don't think, has even revealed that they have size at this point. Ivan D, now about to get it revealed, going for the defense of the center of the map. Not sure I agree with this. I mean, right now, let's look at Ivan D's base. So Ivan D has two lotuses in the west side of the map. And in the center, there's these defenders here. And over in the northwest, you have the factory, you have a lotus, and you have the metal extractors. So this lotus here is going to be defending everything pretty well, although there is a shadow right here and right here. There's a shadow. So if you go like here, the lotus can't really hit it. Go behind here, the lotus can't really hit it. And size could set themselves up there before they actually start attacking. Though it would be a little hard to hit the metal extractor from behind that shadow, it would still be possible to hit the solar collector, obviously, and also... I think it might be possible to hit the metal extractor from there. The sides are not purely melee. It's a little bit finicky. However, going to the center here with the defenders, that just reveals that sides exist. I mean, it does start to get rid of the defender line. That is, I can see why Steel Blue might opt to do that, because mass defenderness is a common thing that players will do in the mid game. It makes it rather difficult to penetrate a base. And this scythe is getting rid of that in advance, just preventing it from going up in the first place. Also going to be able to get rid of Radar, and that is important as well. Although admittedly, the fact that Radar is there is actually working in Steel Blue's advantage. Because at this point, Steel Blue can send out basically decoy glaives. Just the glaives go around and pull Ivan D's attention, while Steel Blue can just throw size around the rest of the map. And the glaives, they need to be responded to, but they're not the only threat. So Ivan D can just mix up Steel Blue with these glaives, and that would work pretty nicely, I would think. But anyway, Ivan D doesn't even care about that, just going straight through it. And so far, one more scythe, but no further scythe is being built. Steel Blue not actually building anything, and they are in fact floating. This is a bit of a mistake. They're getting back to construction, getting more scythes up. But yeah, not building there, they could have had another scythe by then. Very easily. Which is a rather unfortunate mechanical error on their part. Especially given that infinite build does exist. They didn't have, and they had enough resources to support the factory directly. And Steel Blue does lose their commander at this point, the four minute mark of the game. Steel Blue losing their commander, and with that, another metal extractor on top of that. They are now at 10 and 10. That's a little bit of a precarious position. Not terrible, they have reserves, but still a bit of a precarious position. And now I don't know how much Steel Blue would even be focusing. I don't know how much Steel Blue is focusing at this point. Probably got to be distracted by losing their commander. That is a big blow. Right now, Steel Blue does have, over in the southwest side, Steel Blue does have a small base, does have a couple of Lotuses. The Scorchers are not focused on that, though, as you can see. The Scorchers are instead trying to harass around the same, the center, in the main base. Trying to get to the east side of the map, go from there down to the main base, not even going through, checking around the west side of the map. Ivan D might be a little bit tunnel visioning here, and I don't see, it looks like Ivan D is regrouping and will be attacking. So I can see, if Ivan D regroups and attacks, hits the size, that would be pretty good. With this many Scorchers, the size, at least one of them will go down, possibly both. And Slasher's coming in as well. I don't really know if... I can't really say I agree with this. I'm honestly pretty enthusiastic with the idea that darts would be the thing to go for. But at this point, Steel Blue does only have two sizes, and Ivan D only knew about the one. However, now we're going to see what happens. One of, this, one of the scorches is going down immediately, and it should point out... Size deal 200 damage a shot. Scorchers have 420 health. That's three shots to kill a Scorcher by a Scythe. Anyway, that, of course, with the Glaive Sword means it basically comes down to two shots, and those Scorchers don't even get a single shot off thanks to that Glaive. The Scorchers could not really avoid that, and that's where I think darts would come in. The darts, using darts instead. Darts, let's go over this. Darts have 55 damage a shot, but, and we got the range is only 180 compared to the size, I think 100, yeah, size of 100 range. And although darts will be one-shotted, you can put six of them as opposed to about two Scorchers. So doing that would give them a lot of room to actually see the Scythe. And then get a couple Scorchers or Levelers or something to deal with the Scythe directly. Like one Leveler per Scythe, or one Leveler and a few darts per Scythe. That should be able to find them and then just kill them immediately. Now at this point we do see the Defender Knights I was talking about, which is exactly what Steel Blue was trying to prevent. And honestly, at this point, they've kind of failed. These sides can't really move in here. They can see what's going on. Though, admittedly, that's a job better suited to gremlins, given the cost. Sides cost 250, gremlins cost 150. But the sides are not detected. At this point, they're still moving around. Steel Blue, once again, continuing to fight against Scorchers. Ivan D going for Scorchers, which I do not agree with. 
And that's something that I've pointed out before. Like with darts, that would be an option. And darts, some darts are kind of underused, honestly. They're 40 metal, and that's not particularly expensive. And now these slashes are going to go down too. Like these slashes won't really have much of a chance. And I do believe sides have a bit of splash damage. So this is one of the scarier things about using darts against them is that they do have some splash damage. But at this point, Ivan D has pretty much locked down Steel Blue's base and shown off why sides are so scary. I'm curious if the players were actually testing sides in this game because it is something that I could see being particularly powerful in this context. Although honestly, like I said, darts would have worked pretty well and not sure what else. Let's let's analyze some of this stuff here. So we have options leveler, ravager, and darts are now being built finally, I should point that out. They are quite a ways down the queue, however. And this scythe has 800 health. So these are our options here on the right. Leveler, 220 damage a shot for every two seconds, but range 2 nice, so that's pretty impressive. With a dart spotter, that would be very powerful, although the darts would die in the process thanks to the leveler splash. Ravager, actually why am I bringing that up, Ravager's too slow. Projectile for the Ravager is way too slow, so levelers are an option. Scorchers are another option, which actually right here, I don't know why to bring that up. Scorchers, 314 damage a second if they're right next to the scythe, which is basically suicide. Not really the best option. See, I think probably, because the problem with leveler though is levelers cost the same as the scythe. So a leveler and a couple darts is already over cost of a scythe. Now for two sides it'd be quite handy. Once you get to as the numbers increase, the leveler dart mix would be faring far better. But at the start it's not as easy to really sell. Where Scorcher Dart wouldn't be a bad mix either this at this stage in the game. But it looks like the factory is about to go down, and we see that Ivan D's commander is trying to move back to base, trying to get rid of these sides with his commander or with their commander directly. Is a beam laser commander, so that will at least be somewhat useful. But at this point, Steel Blue. Got rid of the factory, that is gone, the scythe dying in the process, but more, well, more scythes are incoming. Five more scythes coming from Steel Blue. Like Steel Blue is just building all the scythes. This scythe over here, there's a warrior over here just for good measure. At this point though, Ivan D wouldn't be able to see it. Although also at this point, Ivan D should probably have gotten wise to the fact that Steel Blue pretty much always attacks their size to the south. Oh, I mean, okay, in that one case they came in from the east side, but they always attack from the southwest rather than from the northeast. That would be something to keep in mind. However, it doesn't really seem to matter. Ivan D is going to lose another Mason, and that is just... <sighs> That's a thing. When it comes to this many sides, you got to be careful. That's what I'm saying. Just throw darts around like fleas to figure out what the heck's going on, where the sides are. Even just spread them around. Put them on the map so you can catch the sides as they're going through. And you get you can at least get a read on where the scythes are and where they're going. Even though they kill the darts, at least you get the information. That is huge, especially that mason going down there. That's 140 metal that could that's not 140 metal, that's a builder. That is a full-on builder that just went down for no good reason. There was no reason for that to have died, and that is where scouting is very important, especially when you know your opponent is going for scythes, and Ivan D does. At this point, Ivan D continuing to go for the scorchers. Going for 25 scorchers. Yeah, this is... Ivan D is panicking right now. Ivan D clearly is not sure what to do and going for Scorchers because it's fast, it's powerful, and everyone forgets that darts exist. That's that's kind of a thing. People kind of forget that darts exist. And I'm going to see if I can actually go over that later after this game is finished. Kind of, I don't know, test my conjecture about this. Because scythes are kind of tricky to deal with. They do deal a lot of damage, they are cloaked, and once they get in large numbers, they can be difficult to deal with, especially when you consider the fact that they cloak and they decloak only when stuff gets nearby, and when stuff gets nearby, that's when they win. As you can see, even getting hit directly by static defense, they still don't take a whole lot of damage. Or at least they don't take a whole lot of damage in terms of their total health. They don't die quickly. That's the key part. So I have indeed right now just focusing way too heavily on Scorches, which is rather unfortunate. And at this point, Steel Blue is basically in the lead by actually a, not as wide of a margin as it looks. But the sides, like the stats don't show, but the sides do. And Scorchers trying to do what they can to counter harass. 
which is also a good idea actually because Steel Blue is going for a hyper aggressive strategy. I mean, if we look at what Steel Blue has, they have, well, basically one Lotus. The second Lotus is under production, but two Scorchers can get rid of a Lotus fairly easily. The, the defender back here is a bit of a concern. However, that sort of pressure does basically put Ivany in a situation where they only have to worry about getting attacked directly. So if they have some defenses in their main base, which they have plenty of, they can just go in and deal with Steel Blue stuff. And Steel Blue either has to pull back their sides negating the whole offensive nature of them. Or they have to basically go for an all-in base trade. Neither situation is particularly favorable, and I think that's probably the reason why we don't see size a whole lot. That's that's a bit of a weakness of them, is they basically are massive burst attack at some unknown point. But the thing is, they don't necessarily work especially well for defense. If they're being used for defense, they're a bit of a waste. So let's see what happens. Let's see if Ivan D goes to that. And Ivan D is definitely going for some peripheral harassment, which is good. I don't think Ivan D is aware of this. No, Ivan D has no clue about this corner. And the size, three sides in the middle, is going for it directly. And I think Steel Blue, yeah, Steel Blue is doing exactly what Ivan D should be doing, forcing Ivan D scorchers back, which means Ivan D can't really force these sides back. And that's playing into Steel Blue's hands. I mean, Steel Blue wants to be on the offensive. That's exactly what Steel Blue wants. Ivan D, on the other hand, does not have themselves too well set up to defend, especially not against sides. And at this point, it probably would be a better idea for Ivan D to simply attack directly. But like I said, building darts. Just to have a way of knowing where the sides are, so something expendable dies. And possibly there's enough of them actually kills, but probably dies. The darts are not likely to get a kill off. But as long as they know where the sides are, as long as Dilu has an idea of where the sides are, they can follow up with pretty much anything else. Scorches are probably the most cost-effective option, though another option would, like I said, be levelers. Or possibly slashers for the range. But yeah, darts for the spotting. And at this point, the side, those sides are gone, but more sides are coming, and Steel Blue basically has the game in their... Not quite in their pocket yet. Ivan D does have one more chance. Like I said, this is... These are intimidation tactics from Steel Blue, and they are working fairly well. Ivan D's starting to get paranoid. Checking the northeast, needs to check the southwest. But Ivan D... Basically just getting hit by size on all angles, does not know where to go, does not know what's going to happen. Not even sure how to defend against it. Faraday is not a bad idea, but like I said, knowing where the sides are is the first step. Because at this point, they're being able to just get in, get in where it's weak, and hit it before it can be strengthened. And hit it before anything can actually be mobilized to help defend. And this is Ivany now doing what needs to be done, moving in, dealing some damage. Though, enough defenses do exist. There are a couple defensive sides and three offensive sides. At this point, there's just way too much from Steel Blue. These Scorchers are really not doing especially well. Not doing horribly, however, but they aren't doing especially well. They are, however, doing what should be done. They're attacking directly, letting the static defenses handle the sides, not trying to deal with the sides themselves. Although, in this case, they are attacking the sides near Steel Blue's base, but they can go from there into... Well, I think if I think if Ivan D knew about or bothered to check the southwest side, they would win, or at least they would get farther and farther ahead. And levelers up as well, because the thing is, like I said, levelers are quite handy in this case. Steel Blue will have to deal with that, but at this point, Steel Blue doesn't even have to. Ivan D is still kind of on the defensive, not as heavily as before, but still kind of on the defensive. And now we go in for the attack. But Ivan D being really cautious, like, I don't know why Ivan D is just going for the size and not going for the infrastructure or trying to scout around to figure out where else Steel Blue might be set up. Like I said, Ivan D is kind of afraid, and now having lost all their Scorchers, they really don't have much of an option to actually implement any of the things I was talking about. They can't really go in and harass the Southwest. They can't really go in and harass the main base, although harassing the main base at this stage is probably an unwise idea. But they definitely can't attack the southwest, which is a bit more vulnerable and definitely a much juicier target. The levelers sort of can, but even then, there's a speed disadvantage. That's a bit of the problem. You almost want to have the levelers hanging out with darts. The darts as a wall to scout out, to screen out all these sides. And at this point, Ivan D, this is interesting. Ivan D is actually attacking ground in order to try to deal with the sides. Which is kind of clever, but I still think misapplied. It's easy enough to get quick units that I can just scout out the sides and figure out what's going on. Now, at this one, Ivan D will fin find out about this southwest base. They will figure that out, but it might be a little bit too late at this point. I really don't see anything working out for that. 
yeah, the levelers will be able to see that. They know something's there, but at this point, the size can stop them. Five size by Steel Blue, sorry, by Ivan D's base. And Ivan D, this is the biggest part of it too. Ivan D has been under so much pressure, they have had no chance to expand. They've been at 12 metal. They've tried to expand a little bit, but basically can't. Anytime they try to expand, it's either shut down by size or completely interfered with by size. Like, they don't even get to start in the first place. And this is another thing I mean. Like, Ivan D could have stopped that with darts. But unfortunately, we didn't see that. And that's, that is really, like I said, that's really kind of sad. Like, Ivan D at this point has pretty much lost the game outright because, I mean, the levelers. A little bit too late. Now, finally, we have darts. Finally, we have darts to go for the screening job. Ivan D figures it out, and I kind of wish I knew if there was a second game of this. I mean, I do only want to do one game for the analysis cast in general, but I do kind of wish I knew if there was a second game of this, because if there was, it'd be interesting to see if Steel Blue, how, how they fare, whether darts are used en masse, or if it's just a matter of Steel Blue ends up winning with sides regardless. I'd be curious to see what happens there, but as you can see, the darts are screening out the sides, and the levelers are right there, but they are not... They are now distracted by the Rockos, because this is kind of the tricky part. The Rockos are basically screening all that, all those darts out, screening the levelers out. The levelers can't really beat Rockos, but once again, Ivany does go for the assault, and that is, once again, a bit too late. Just, it's been too much time. Steel Blue has built up too far. Ivan D really doesn't have much to work from. So at this point, Ivan D is basically, yeah, they are completely dead. Not even basically dead. That. They even say GG. That is game. So I want to kind of go over a bit. I don't know how well this is going to work. Bit of an experimental thing that I have had in mind for a little while. But I want to see what would happen if that, if darts had been built around like that five minute mark where those sides had come in. I mean, this isn't exactly the best test naturally because it's going to involve kind of messing with the replay. But it might actually be informative. We'll see. I mean, I'll have to just bear with me as the replay sets up. Unfortunately, I can't really easily start. I suppose I can start doing Carpets of Spring. This is a bit experimental, so bear with me. I haven't. This is something I've kind of wanted to do as sort of a testing hypothetical situations idea. It'll be interesting to see how it works out. But yeah, let's see. Hopefully, if we can actually make any conclusive conclusive observations what actually would happen if darts were used and that well just have to start that and get rapidly at the game to where it was so just just pop back to the game just to get the replay back to where it was before the game kind of took that really bad turn for Ivan D so right now we have yeah I'm gonna go into dot wars mode for a sec just wait until we actually start getting like once these scores are gone and that's where the size really started to build up and those size okay this this is where Ivan D this is where they really should have dealt with. this is where they should have dealt with it and let's see what happens if they were to have dealt with it this way Building some darts and possibly levelers. I can't use the hockeys here. Let's see what would have happened if they had built darts and levelers. Now I'm just gonna go off of. I mean, they have radar. Can't. Yeah, there you go. So if we were Ivan D right now, or I. There we go. Not sure why I. Yeah, like I said, this is a bit experimental. I thought if I was on the right team, I could control the units. What the heck? Oh, I can't. I can't line move units while in this mode. Okay, that's interesting. But anyway, what you can do is, can I do cues? Yes, I can do cues. Okay, so let's just, let's start throwing these darts around, try to screen out for stuff. In fact, better idea would be to patrol. And this is where that warrior gets a little bit annoying, but better idea would be in patrol because we don't know exactly where these guys are. And let's just, Take off some of the scorch. I should take off the slashers as well. Maybe put a few more in later, but yeah, at this point. Just darts. Oh, darn it. I can't manipulate the Q here. 
So at this point now the levelers are here. That survives a lot better than in the actual game. And the darts so far have not actually spotted anything yet, but they are still just patrolling around, seeing what's happening. And more darts have been put into place, so let's throw those around too and see how though what those find, if anything. So at this point we have darts just going around the map. Because this is basically where the factory was locked down. So at this point that didn't happen. The factory was not locked down. Admittedly, I can't really play I can sort of play for Steel Blue at the same time to try to make it more even, but at this point the factory has not been locked down, and I might be able to even get this radar killed, because why not? So at this point, I mean, there would be more responses to this if I if Steel Blue was being played, because if I were to go and, I don't know, go out completely, or, well, actually, we're going to look at Steel Blue's perspective, and Steel Blue is, at this point, they have the sides moving, I mean, they don't have any sides too many sides yet. They do have some so far, but there are just darts going around the map. No, I can't really abort this, can I? Shoot. Okay, well, I've, I'll have to do a bit more experimentation as exactly how best to do that. But yeah, at this point, we have darts going around. The two sides that were here before aren't anymore. And Steel Blue, basically at this point, doesn't have a whole lot to work with. And a couple sides are here, and this scythe probably would be moved out, I would think. Like, kind of move it further out, get the scythe as well, just sort of to get an idea of where to go. But yeah, that's the thing, is there are darts now everywhere. There are darts scouting for these sides, trying to figure out the sides are. There are, they are kind of known, so it's known where they are, but the idea, of course, is that we, that I have indeed could build a great many sides, or a great many darts, sorry. They have darts just sort of going everywhere. And now at this point, yeah, we have darts spotting builders. Darts spotting, well, everything really. It's just darts everywhere now. So there's a nice big screen of darts. Now, of course, this is fairly easy to deal with because you could just send out a few darts here and there. And, and now a scythe has been spotted. So we see the scythes that were coming in here before and they are getting spotted because the darts spot them. Now the defender is able to deal with them a bit more effectively. The Scorcher here can actually get rid of it because the defenders were useful because the darts spotted it in advance. So actually that's not a bad thing to point out either. Having darts near the defenders wouldn't have been a bad idea. And levels as well. Because like I said, this is just sort of my hypothetical testing. So yeah, darts, now of course it would have to be, it would remain to be tested but the point is that now we know there's a scythe over here. Okay, so now we know that the scythe is around here somewhere. And we could say send a dart here to try to see what's going on. And admittedly, didn't do it as per as well as I could have. Although admittedly that was a point where a leveler was actually handy. But then again, a, the scythe would try to avoid the levelers. That's one thing to point out. These scythes wouldn't necessarily reveal themselves as much. The levelers are kind of there on defense. In fact, putting that on attack was a poor choice. But now at this point, it's... If I were to go back to the view of Steel Blue, this point where Steel Blue does have several sides set up, they have some more, actually, yeah, this is where the sides actually originally come in for Steel Blue. And that's, well, okay, at this point we've totally gotten desynced, so I'm gonna just stop here. But that was a bit of a proof of concept, so it sort of shows the idea that had Ivan D built up some darts, built up darts, thrown them on patrol routes, just had them try to screen out the entire area for size, knowing size are coming. It's a little bit costly, but honestly, it'd be worth it, especially with all the defenses being built. That was that was a big loss for Ivan D at that point. Because remember, in the original game, by this point, this factory was destroyed. It had been locked down, it had been totally destroyed. Ivan D was basically out of the game and was trying to scrabble their way back up the cliff of the situation they were in. That, in this hypothetical case, was not the case. They were spotted in advance, and the levelers stopped them. I mean, they weren't so much spotted in advance, but the levelers did stop them. They had much more firepower, and they were much, much tougher. Because sides deal 200 damage with pop, well, levelers have 1100 health. That's six shots. While well, the leveler, on the other hand, only needs about... Well, it needs eight shots. So it needs eight seconds, and the scythe needs, I think... What does the scythe need? I'm gonna have to switch to the other view. Scythe needs... 
Okay, damage per second on 4 to 3. Yes, the scythe needs about the same amount. Actually, the scythe needs far longer. Come to think of it. Because that's over... That's... Yeah, about 8 seconds, but at the same time, levelers knock the scythe away, stunning them out of their attack animation, and getting them in a really uncomfortable situation as well, just in terms of where they can damage. If it pushes them out of the way, the size might be out of range as a result of that. So overall, the levelers get a massive advantage. Yeah, after that first scythe, at least one leveler and a few darts should have been produced. Anyway, that is, I think, that for the analysis tonight. I apologize that it was a bit late. There were some issues with transit, but that aside, I thank you all for watching, and I hope that hitbox worked out well. I'm going to continue testing it throughout October. This is just an initial test, kind of see how it works, and testing a couple other things, like the idea of how you make the actual replay work in a way that tests hypothetical situations. That wasn't the best test. I'm going to have to work on that idea. But I think as a pilot concept, it worked okay. I'll have to figure out also how to get back to being a spectator. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and that'll be it for me tonight. So thank you all for watching, and have a good night.